Good evening. This is Akash Bani. I am Saira Mujtaba with the news at 9. The headlines. President Draupadi Murmu emphasizes the need to strengthen justice delivery system for a just and fair society. Releases three publications brought out by Supreme Court. Winter session of parliament to begin from 25th of this month. Campaigning in full swing for assembly elections in Jharkhand and Maharashtra, India Block releases seven-point manifesto for Jharkhand. India and Nigeria discuss and identify specific areas of cooperation in fight against terrorism. Voting underway in the United States to elect next president. And India submits letter of intent to host 2036 Summer Olympics and Paralympic Games. And now the news in detail. President Draupadi Murmu has emphasized the need to strengthen the justice delivery system to ensure a just and fair society. The president was speaking after releasing three publications brought out by the Supreme Court of India at Rajpati Bhavan this evening. As we celebrate the 75th year of the Supreme Court of India, I share the view of those who admire the contribution of the court as the conscience keeper of independent India. The Supreme Court of India has developed a jurisprudence which is rooted in the Indian ethos and realities. Our justice delivery system must strengthen our onward march as a just and fair society. The three publications released are Justice for the Nation, Reflections on 75 Years of the Supreme Court, Prisons in India, Mapping Prison Manuals and Measures for Reformation and Decongestion, and Legal Aid through Law Schools, a report on the working of legal aid cells in India. Chief Justice of India, Diva Chandrachur, and Law and Justice Minister Arjun Ram Meghwal were present on the occasion. Earlier speaking at the event, the Chief Justice highlighted the importance of understanding ground realities for laws and policies to have a meaningful impact. He pointed out that the hallmark of all the publications released today is the element of transparency. Of the three publications, one is a collection of essays which analyze the jurisprudence of the court since its foundation, while the remaining two are studies which assess the functioning of legal aid cells in universities and the state of our prisons. All three publications are moments of self-reflection, both for the Supreme Court as well as the larger legal system. Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla has said that three new criminal laws address challenges of contemporary society. He said these laws were passed after extensive deliberations in the House and Standing Committee. The Lok Sabha Speaker was addressing the officials from 83 countries at a program organized by the Institute of Constitutional and Parliamentary Studies in New Delhi today. संविधान बनाते समय हमारा प्रयास रहा कि संविधान सबके साथ मिलकर बने और सबके सहयोग से बने। संविधान की हर अनुच्छेद पर बड़ी व्यापक चर्चा हुई। भारत का संविधान कई देशों के लिए मार्गदर्शन की भूमिका निभा रहा है। उसी तरीके से जब तीन कानून बनाने का विषय आया, तो उसमें भी कानून बनाने के लिए व्यापक मंथन चर्चा की गई। Winter session of Parliament will be held from 25th of this month till the 20th of December. Parliamentary Affairs Minister Kiran Rijiju said in a social media post that on 26th of November, the 75th anniversary of the adoption of Constitution would be celebrated in the Central Hall of Samvidhan Sadan. Campaigning has picked up momentum for assembly elections in Jharkhand and Maharashtra. In Jharkhand, voting for the first phase of assembly polls will be held on the 13th of this month. Defence Minister and Senior BJP Leader Rajnath Singh held a public rally at Luhardagga in Ranchi. He highlighted that Jharkhand was formed during the BJP-led government with the primary aim of making the state a model of development. Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath addressed a poll meeting at Domchanj in Kodarma. He accused Senior Jharkhand Mukti Morsha Leader and Chief Minister Heman Soren of ruining the state and said that election is the right time to change the government. Congress President Malikarjun Kharge sought vote in favour of India bloc candidates at Mandu in Hazaribagh. Senior JMM leader Himan Surin also addressed a series of meetings across the state. Polling for the second phase in the state will take place on the 20th of this month. 
Meanwhile, the India Bloc today released a seven-point manifesto of the alliance. Congress President Malikarjun Kharge released the manifesto in the presence of JMM leader Himant Sorin, senior RJD leader Jay Prakash Narayan Yadav, and CPI ML leader Shubhendu Sen. Speaking on the occasion, Mr. Kharge said, "Promises made in the manifesto include 2,500 rupees per month to every woman of the state and provision of 10 lakh jobs to the youth." In Maharashtra too campaigning is intensifying across the state as the election date is approaching a total of 4140 candidates are contesting in 288 constituencies our correspondent has the details Maharashtra Chief Minister Eknath Shinde today addressed two rallies in Satara while Deputy Chief Minister and BJP candidate from Southwest Nagpur Devendra Fadnavis held a grand rally to meet and greet voters from his constituency The chief of NCP SP Sharad Pawar today once again hinted that he may retire from active politics after the end of his current tenure as Rajya Sabha MP. Pressing a rally in Baramati, the senior leader however clarified that he will not stop serving the people. Shiv Sena UBT chief Uddhav Thakre canvassed for MVA in Kolhapur's Radhanagri while MNS chief Raj Thakre addressed two rallies in Yavatmal. Nisha Rani, Akashwani News, Mumbai. Today we bring you the profile of Southwest Nagpur seat in the state. It is one of the high voltage constituencies in Vidarbha region from where Deputy Chief Minister and Senior BJP leader Devendra Fadnavis is contesting. More from our correspondent. The Southwest Nagpur constituency has been formed in 2009 by carving out from Nagpur West. Devendra Fadnavis won the assembly election from 1999 to 2019 for five times from Southwest and erstwhile West constituency of Nagpur. This is his sixth election from this constituency. Constituency has over 4 lakh 81 thousand voters. In 2014, Devendra Fadnavis defeated Congress candidate Prafulla Gurde, while in 2019 he defeated the Congress candidate Dr. Ashish Deshmukh by a huge margin of over 49 thousand votes. Congress candidate and former corporator of Nagpur Municipal Corporation Prafulla Gurde will face again Fadnavis. A total of 12 candidates are in the fray for this constituency, which includes candidates from Vanchit Bahujan Aghadi and the Bahujan Samaj Party. Both BJP and Congress candidates are focusing on the campaign rally and foot march in the constituency to garner the support of voters. Dhananjay Vankhede, Akashwani News, Nagpur. Meanwhile, the Election Commission of India has appointed Sanjay Kumar Verma as Maharashtra's new Director General of Police. This comes a day after Rashmi Shukla was removed from the post following numerous complaints by the opposition parties. This is Akashwani giving you the news. For quick news updates around the clock follow us on our X handle at AIR News Alerts and for details of stories and more log on to our website www.newsonair.gov.in and download the News on AIR app. Welcome back you're listening to News at 9. The second strategic and counter terrorism dialogue between India and Nigeria concluded today in New Delhi. During the two-day long dialogue, National Security Advisor Ajit Doval and his Nigerian counterpart Nuhu Ribadu held in-depth discussions within the framework of the strategic India-Nigeria partnership on threats and challenges emanating from terrorism, extremism, radicalization, including through cyberspace, as well as from international crime, arms and drug smuggling. The two sides identified specific areas of cooperation to enhance their fight against all forms of terrorism, reiterating their firm belief that there can be no justification for terrorism in any form or manifestation. Voting is underway in the United States to elect the 47th president. Republican nominee and former president Donald Trump and Democratic candidate and vice president Kamala Harris are locked in a tough fight for the top post. As the country has multiple time zones, most polling stations in the country will close between 5:30 a.m. and 9:30 a.m. Indian Standard Time tomorrow. Results of the elections are expected as polling closes, but it will take days before it is known who will be the next US president. A candidate needs an absolute majority of 270 or more votes out of 538 electoral college votes to become the US president. More from our correspondent from Washington DC. 
Long queues are forming at uh, various locations where the elections are taking place. Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Nevada, North Carolina, Pennsylvania and Wisconsin are the seven key swing states where it is difficult to predict which way are they going to swing in terms of support for Republican or Democrat. Meanwhile, record early voting was recorded in this edition of the presidential elections. Over 80 million people have already cast their ballot in the early voting. In Washington, Washington, D.C., the security has been heightened. Shubhendu Ghosh for Prasad Bharti, Washington, D.C. The four-day long festival of Chhat Puja began today in different parts of the country with the ritual of Nahai Khai. During Chhat Puja, devotees worship the sun god and his wife Usha Chhati Maya. Tomorrow, the ritual of Karna will be performed. After that, a 36-hour long fast will begin in which devotees abstain from eating and drinking. The festival will culminate on Friday morning after paying oblation to the rising sun. In Bihar, devotees in large numbers today gathered at the banks of Ganga, Kosi, Gandak, Bagmati and other rivers to offer prayers to the sun god. Our correspondent reports preparations have been made at banks of rivers across the state for the evening and morning oblations to the sun god. A large number of devotees converge at different Chhat Ghats on the banks of Ganga in Patna. The district administration has put in place all arrangements for crowd management. Devotees will offer prayers at 102 Ghats in Patna. Talking to Akashwani News, District Magistrate Dr. Chansekhar Singh said more than 1,000 CCTV cameras are being used to keep an eye on the crowd. Patna Sahari Chhatra mein kul 102 Ghats hain और 63 बड़े तालाब हैं पटना शहरी क्षेत्र में 45 पार्कों में भी व्यवस्था की गई है छठ का अर्घ देने की और नगर निगम के द्वारा टैंकर के माध्यम से वहां गंगा जल भी पहुंचाया जा रहा है कुल मिलाकर व्यवस्था ठीक है घाटों का निर्माण हो गया है साफ सफाई हो गई है Special drives are underway to ensure cleanliness at banks of rivers ponds and water bodies Dharmendra Kumar Rai Akashwani News Patna Prime Minister Modi has extended his best wishes to the people on the occasion in view of the Chhat Festival, the railways are operating special trains for the convenience of passengers. Today, around 25 festival special trains are originating from Delhi NCR to the eastern regions of the country. India's journey towards tuberculosis or TB elimination has been recognized globally with a noteworthy 17.7% decline in TB incidences from 2015 to 2023. As per WHO's Global TB Report 2024, the rate is twice the global average decline of 8.3%. India, as a signatory to the UN Sustainable Development Goals, had pledged to achieve the NTB targets by 2025. Secretary for Information and Broadcasting Sanjay Jaju today held a meeting with industry representatives of production houses, studios, AVGC stakeholders and academic leaders in Mumbai. The Secretary held detailed discussions about the industry events, including IFI and World Audiovisual and Entertainment Summit. The domestic benchmark indices today climbed nearly 1%, led by a rally in metal and bank stocks. We have a report. The 30-share BSE Sensex advanced 694 points to close at 79,477, while the NSC Nifty 50 added 218 points to settle at 24,213. In the forex market, the Indian rupee today ended at 84 rupees and 11 pesa against the US dollar. Brent crude was trading at $75.53 per barrel and WTI crude was trading at $71.93 per barrel when reports last came in. Anubha Rohatki for Akashwani News. The Indian Olympic Association has submitted a letter of intent to the International Olympic Committee or IOC's Future Host Commission expressing India's desire to host the 2036 Olympic and Paralympic Games. Sources said the letter was submitted last month. Prime Minister Modi had talked about his government's aspiration to host the 2036 Olympics. India's commitment to hosting the 2036 Games was further emphasized at the IOC's 141st session in Mumbai last year. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. President Draupadi Murmu emphasizes the need to strengthen justice delivery system for a just and fair society. Releases three publications brought out by Supreme Court. Winter session of Parliament to begin from 25th of this month. Campaigning in full swing for assembly elections in Jharkhand and Maharashtra, India Bloc releases seven-point manifesto for Jharkhand. India and Nigeria discuss and identify specific areas of cooperation in fight against terrorism. Voting underway in the United States to elect next president. 
and India submits letter of intent to host 2036 Summer Olympics and Paralympics. For details of these stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.gov.in and News on AIR app. That's all in the news at 9. Good night.